Are you an INFP who's tired of relationships never working out? Well, let me explain why and some things that you can do to help out. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help geeks, gamers, and creatives to unleash the strengths of their personality types so they can live more fulfilling lives. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be nice? More fulfilling life. So some of the, the issues that INFPs bring to relationships are based off personality type, but they're also based off not just your personality type, but your partner's personality type and social expectations and just the way the world works. There are tons of different things that go into a relationship because like I, I think about it like this. There's you're a person. OK, you are fractal. You have all these different parts of yourself, the part of you that wants to. Uh, be more motivated, the part of you that wants to just relax, the part of you that wants to change the world, the part of you that just wants to give up. There's tons of different parts. And other people have that too. <laughs> and all of these different things that are going on between people and yourself and just everything else get mashed up and it just gets chaotic. It gets messy. So what can you do about it? Well, I think that like some of the issues first, understanding those might be helpful. So going into a relationship as an INFP. So I'm married now. I've been married for years, <laughs> for years, whatever year it is now. Oh, man, that's uh, well, like six, seven years. Okay, eight years, maybe. I have a bad memory. Um, and my wife is an ENFJ, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Going into relationships, I was always uh, extremely needy and clingy um, and uh, a bit dramatic. I didn't want the other person to, to leave me, to escape. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, wrote them messages a lot and was quite overbearing, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, but then also, I would play it cool. I'd be distant. I'd be too cold too concerned with my own self, not paying attention to their needs, their aspects of the relationship, you know, their influence and what they want out of it and everything like that. It was just, it was hard for me to understand the other person and also give them enough space. Um, so as an INFP, you might be resonating with what I'm talking about right now. The desire for deep connection with another person that introverted feeling aspect of yourself, introverted feeling, I call it the resonating soul. This is about what resonates with you at a soul level, your identity level, depending on, you know, how you want to perceive it. But you have that and you really want to find that within somebody else, like somebody that you could just like resonate with. You could just be soul buddies, just mesh souls and have a deeper understanding of life and humanity and people and just everything, right? Be able to share that space with somebody, but that's really hard to do. And sometimes we try to go for that too fast. We just meet somebody brand new and we're like, hey, let me just tell you everything about myself. Please share with me. And that's a bit creepy for people. So, um, got to be careful with that. I'm not necessarily sure where that point's going, but, um, it takes time. You got to court, you got to build up some, some familiarity with the other person before you expose your heart and try to give it to them, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's one of the big challenges that I personally dealt with a lot, um, that desire for deep connection, but also People don't want that right away, right? And we also don't understand ourselves as much as we would like to. So expecting somebody else to understand us to that degree is is unfair. Um, but it is what it is. And, you know, we expect that in a lot of ways until we have that clarity around it that, oh, yeah, that, that can't actually happen because I don't share enough with other people. Maybe I should do that more. You know, so what, how can you find a partner that is going to compliment you? Well, within personality type, the, the golden pair that they recommend is an ENFJ. Um, and that's because you kind of push and pull each other in ways that are understandable. Like, oh yeah, I, I kind of, 
I understand feeling, I understand intuition, but you do it differently and you're extroverted and I'm introverted. So like we, we just kind of like push and pull on each other in ways that can complement. They also bring with it that like tons of confusion sometimes. Like, why would you do it like that? Why, why does it matter what other people think and feel? Like, if you're true, if you're honest, if your intentions are good, then who, who cares what other people expect? But alas, that's a difference between introverted feeling and extroverted feeling. So that is going to always be there. And there's, there's never going to be <laughs> one personality type that you could just find anybody of that personality type and okay, of course, we're going to be best friends and it's going to be awesome because there's always going to be issues with people, even within ourselves, right? And so we can't expect that to just be like easy mode all the time, you know? So it's a, it's a work, work in progress. But I do suggest if you're going to uh, seek a relationship by personality type, ENFJs, if you can find them, INFJs, um, ISFPs, INFPs, like I think those are generally the ones that ENFPs, I don't know if I mentioned that, are the ones that we can like tend to understand and we give more like lenience to their personality type and they usually tend to understand us a bit more um, if that's your goal. If your goal is to, I don't know, to be more productive, you know, like Bring some ESTJs and ENTJs into your life. Uh, once you get to understand and, and appreciate other people's personality types, you can also appreciate that within yourself. And you can do it the other way too. You can appreciate your extroverted thinking, strategizing commander part of yourself more, have some love for that aspect of yourself, and then your relationships in the outer world will improve as well because of that. So that's a, another way of going about it and some of the personality types that could mesh well. And that's not all of them, of course. Like I, I love the ENTPs in my life, the ESFJs, INTPs. They're all, all cool people. Everybody has their own superpowers and their own strengths, you know, but there are, you know, good pairs, I suppose. But it all depends on health too. So what are some strategies for maintaining fulfilling relationships as an INFP. So I think the best thing that you can do, and it's hard is to just be more open, to be more, you know, open with what's going on internally, more expressive about that, um, to be more appreciative of the other person, like actually notice and, and compliment them, be more proactive with, you know, how you are, um, wielding wielding the relationship and i was imagining like a pottery spinny thing you know and you're just like kind of shaping the relationship some other things that you can do is to work on yourself the more you work on yourself the more you can have space to you know appreciate and love and and be with the other person and be present with them uh, being present is extremely important because i know you know for infps we tend to to escape, we tend to, you know, dissociate and wander off and fly away and things like that, go into our own space. And that can be a bit frustrating for some people, because that's just not how they interact with the world. So it depends on the person and their level of development, your level of development. Um, but those are a couple tips and hints, strategies that can work for you to have a better and more fulfilling relationship. I hope it helps. Let me know down below in the comments what's worked for you because we can bring that together. We can use our INFP hive mind to support other people so that the world can be a better place. Also, one more one more little thing here. Um, if you're really stressed out, you're not going to be good in a relationship. So make sure that you have time and space. This is something I always tell my clients for um, for creativity and self exploration in your day, in your week, you know, at least, but make sure that it's a part of your life that you are, you're writing, you're drawing, doing poetry, dancing, whatever it is, some sort of self understanding, self exploration aspect. If you don't have that, you're going to get really stressed out. And that micromanaging commander 
part of yourself is going to come out and it might you know blow up get angry and things like that and that's not a good place to be okay hope it helps see ya